Alright, now I gotta get down some pretty steep uh, rocks here with all my gear on. Wish me luck. Alright, so this is one of my favorite spots to go on an overcast day, but I have to be honest, I have only gotten a good painting out of this location maybe two or three times, and I've been here probably 50. Uh, but I love it here so much, I keep coming back. And the color in the water here is just beautiful. So today what I'm gonna be doing is I have a view catcher, I believe it's called. Uh, you can get these from like Blick or Jerry's or something online. They're almost, they're like eight bucks. Um, but what this does is it allows me to, uh, you know, compose using the, this opening here, which you can adjust. If you notice, there's a hole in it. And what that does is it allows me to isolate color and judge it uh, when it's isolated like that, it's easier to judge the color. Oftentimes, uh, the color is affected by the colors that are next to it. By isolating it, you get a clear idea of what that color is. So, I am going to do some color studies and then maybe see if I can come up with uh, a good composition. And like I said, I'm gonna be using, I've got some Viridian and I also have some um, phthalo green and I'm gonna see if I can get some accurate ocean colors because that's been something that I've struggled with uh, using my sort of split primary palette. So I'm gonna set up and see what I can do. Okay, so I'm thinking something like this. All right, so we've got a couple layers of waves. In the back will be, this will be a darker wave that's just breaking. And in the front, uh, there's another wave here that's probably already broken and has some of that green color in it. And then these will be rocks in the foreground right here. One of the biggest challenges I find is trying to figure out what color uh, to mix for the white. Because the whites are not white. Um, but when you look at it, it's very hard to determine, even with the color isolator. So one thing you can do is you can kind of look through the color isolator and you can ask yourself a series of questions. Is it yellow? Is it blue? Is it purple? Is it green? Whatever. Um, and then just try to mix up something and hold up your palette knife to the white water and see how, see how close you are. All right, so I don't pre-mix very often, but I am out here to study, so I'm gonna do that. The waves look like, or the white water looks like it's kind of has a purple tint to it. Um, now I could be completely wrong, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a little bit of dioxazine purple and white. Um, that's pretty extreme right there. Dioxazine purple is pretty strong. I'm just gonna kind of, and then I'm gonna get it onto my knife like that. I'm gonna hold it up. All right, now I'm gonna try a little bit of white with a touch of uh, cadmium yellow lemon. All right, so now titanium white with a touch of phthalo green. to me that I'm kind of getting a little bit of all of those colors in there. Um, definitely some of the purple and the yellow. Uh, the green, maybe not so much in the white water, but certainly in the water that's surrounding it. Anyway, I'm gonna to try to mix up some other colors using the same method, the sky, uh, and then also uh, some of the darker water and the rocks. All right, so this gray is a mid-value gray. And I notice when I look through the isolator that the water in the distance is kind of a mid-value. So I just mixed up a blue-green to start with. Uh, that's a, about a mid-value. All right, and I can tell that it needs more red. Surprising how much red is in, uh, is in the water. Bizarre. can't be that red. 
surprisingly, it's not that far from that color. See, that's really amazing. Okay, that's pretty spot on. <laughs> I would never have guessed that. All right, so the ocean closer up is more of a, I'm gonna try to, I brought this thalo out, so I might as well use it. Oh my gosh, look at that. Jeez. I'm gonna have to gray that way, way, way down. Again, more red. All right, that's pretty close. Wow, that is really, really gray. Okay, so update, it's starting to rain out here, but I'm gonna keep going, but I have to put my camera away. So I'll keep you guys updated. All right, so using the color isolator and then pre-mixing colors, I think is a really good idea. At least just to get a starting point on the colors and then I can kind of shift them. Uh, but it's sort of laid out the palette of the scene, so to speak. Um, so I'm gonna do some more of that in the future. Um, yeah, I was really surprised at how much red and purple was in the water, even though to my mind, I was like, oh, it looks green, but there's a lot of red in it. So anyway, the tide's come in and it's getting pretty hairy out here. It's about 8 p.m. Uh, I'm supposed to be out of here by sunset, which I think is 8.30, so I gotta pack it up. But anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed this little adventure and I will see you in the next video.